back in this bitch, uh Know we full attack in this shit, uh You know the full Mac came equipped, uh So promise you don't want no Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 More Than 92 podcast, where we always keep it 100. I am your host, Harrison, and today I'm doing a collaborative ep- uh, episode with the Toxic Tangents podcast, and I'm here kicking it with my man, Julius. How are you today? Man, I'm great. I'm great. It's Memorial Day weekend. I'm ready to turn up. You know what I'm saying? It is the big Memorial Day weekend. Um, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, speaking of that, before I ask you about the podcast, is you grilling out or are you going to parties? Nah, we are actually well both. Uh, I'm at my I'm I'm shooting from my friend's apartment where he got a little grill situation. It's raining uh, here, so we we chilling, we chilling till the rain stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, uh, we started uh, yesterday, and that's what I'm eating right here on the podcast now. So excuse oh, my Jesus. excuse my hungriness today because I just came from hooping. <laughs> and I got back late, so I was like, dang, I ain't gonna be able to eat before i go on so i'm gonna just snack and go but i was sitting there yesterday and we made not I, I just came to like the realization like all that prepping if you cooking yourself is like so fucking unnecessary like i i am not that big of a ribs fam i will gladly admit it y'all can take whatever what? card y'all want to y'all can take whatever card y'all want to i got two of them so <laughs> it doesn't matter um i got one that don't go i just i i mean they cool to me but they are not everything is everybody hypes them up to be i i've had them all i've had secret secret uh sin shawls magic rib i had terrific tony's fall off the yeah. bone i didn't had it all i didn't did everything for it but i just cannot get into it even cooking them myself yeah. i'm like a real good cook i just it take too long you stanking like the grill all day you got to go back and forth and then hot dogs and hamburgers are just done quick so like, what, what what's your go-to thing for you know, for grilling and barbecuing. So for grilling, I ain't gonna lie to you, I'd be cool with like a hamburger and hot dog because by the time I done got to the ribs, I done ate everything macaroni. <laughs> I done ate everything throughout the day. I don't even really want that shit. And then uh when you grilling, grilling, it's never like for everybody at the house. It's gotta be a function. So that means all that shit gotta go somewhere. Yeah. And niggas come through and eat one cake. I mean my fault, one plate and they i don't know if they want to take it anymore or not i don't know if that's like a shot at my food or y'all was just full or whatever but it's so much shit left over it just don't be worth i gotta prep the night before i'm getting tired and lazy i don't know what this is but i literally cooked them hot dogs and hamburgers and i was done <laughs> by i had potato salad macaroni and cheese i was done in like 30 I feel minutes you. i feel you but it's like that stuff is so basic like that's grilling it's easy to do that like broadwurst and all that shit all right, cool. I get you, cause it it is a lot of work. Like you gotta season everything. If you really season it, I don't know. Look, I'm I got melanin, so I, I season my food. Uh, you know, but I, I feel you with the ribs. If you actually do it right, and everybody got their own little secret, this secret that. I understand. Like some, some people will be like, "Oh, this is a long family recipe." I'm like, "Yo, this shit tastes like the shit I had last week." Uh, but my bad. Is it is it cool to curse on here? No, it's a Christian show. No, I'm playing. Fuck all that. You can cut. Yeah. <laughs> well, but I gotta, I gotta ask that shit because sometimes I, I gotta realize like people don't get wild on their podcast like I do on mine. But um, but yeah, man, I, I understand it is, it is work. It definitely is work, but it's worth it if if somebody could cook. My favorite thing is brisket, but we don't. I don't. I don't be cooking that too much to be honest. See, that's what I'm saying. Like it's it's like. It's kind of like how Thanksgiving is, except Thanksgiving, you don't stink, and then you can kind of eat throughout the day. Like, it's known, you know? But, like, grilling is like, and so far, I'm from Nashville, so, you know, Nashville has to do, like, barbecue and all that shit, so motherfuckers be expecting me to do some other shit. So, like you said, I got to prep the ribs and slather it and put it all that, let it sit all day long. I don't care about that. Then you got to cook it for, like, 15 hours. And again, I didn't had a hot dog by this point. I had I done stole at least at least four or five Hawaiian rolls. I done had a burger. <laughs> I had one or two salads somewhere made in there. And then ribs be done at night. And I like brisket too, but that shit take too long. Like it's too much. It's oh, hot yeah. outside. It stank. Flies coming in and out the house. No, like no. I, I just I put my foot down, and I just feel like like y'all say, fuck them kids, fuck them ribs. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> 
Like I just, I just, that's what I feel on it. Like I, I don't care about it. I, at this point, I'd be putting barbecue sauce on the bitch anyway, so I don't even know if I'm tasting Man, what I feel at this point. The best barbecue, you don't need barbecue sauce. That's what don't. they say about steak, and I still put steak sauce on my steak. I don't want that dry as sizzling oh, meat. I don't know who you know that's cooking, but the best, see, the best of any of this stuff that you're talking about is not dry. It's not dry. I think I'm conditioned to just sauce some shit up. I don't know what it is. I just feel like that missing ingredient is some sauce. And I like, I even put ha- uh, barbecue sauce on my hot dogs now. Like, I, I don't even know when that changed. I heard a nigga say that one time, and I was like, boy, if you don't get your ass on somewhere. And then I snuck and did it, and I was like, this nigga was spitting. <laughs> I was like, man, this. I'm like, I'm on some game now. Like, I, but yes, that is like my ultimate. Like, you don't understand. Like, I hooped yesterday from like eight to no, like nine to like one forty five or something like that. And it wasn't like constant hoop. It was like we got there, and for everybody to know, nigga gonna take a court for all day, and they was arguing. So we ain't probably hooped to about ten forty five. <laughs> so about ten forty five to about one. It was all hooping. I get back to the crib close to two, and you don't know how refreshing it was just to take them. And I don't even like to pat the burgers out no more because for some odd reason, how I be coming on the stove do not be like that on the grill. Grab them frozen ass patties out the out the bag, quick topped them, put up on there. Man, I wasn't even finished with episode of Wayne's Brothers by the time everything was done, and I was content. You know what I mean? You do the that, frozen patties though. I'm about to just say this right now. This can be however it wants. I have done it all. And the older and older I'm getting, the lazier and lazier and lazier I'm getting. You know, like, it's just disrespectful how lazy I'm getting. And I'm content with that. You know, at this point, I feel like fighting. You know what I'm saying? But I, <laughs> might, I don't even feel like I'm going to get up. I just, I just don't have it in me no more because I feel like who I got to prove something to. I've done this already. Like, I've done so much. Like, Y'all know my I can do. Y'all know my stats. Shit, y'all know what I do on the finals when it's go time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's go. You know you taking that belt off. But yes, that was my that was my quick spill for my portion of. Um, I ain't even mad at it, all the way. Like, cause you rationalized it. You rationalized it. So I'm not, I'm not even mad at it. I can't be mad at it. <laughs> now, I just want to go ahead. Who you think got the best barbecue? Cause it, you know it's like Texas barbecue, Memphis barbecue. I know you're not in Memphis, but. Uh, and wh- who's the other barbecue? It's somewhere else. Kansas right? City. Yeah, Kansas City barbecue. I'm like, who? To me, it's all the fucking same, man. I think so. I've eaten, so I've been to all three. Um, well, I've been to Kansas City. Um, so I want to say Texas has. I just think it's something about Texas barbecue. Memphis is cool, and they make very good barbecue. But niggas like to eat certain part, like. The whole chick, I don't care about all that. Like, just give me. I don't want. I, I, I'm lazy. Like, I do not feel like picking my shit off the bone. Like, put it out there and be ready for me. Texas shit, it be just grilled and seasoned and all that. And and now they shit, I've never used any type of barbecue sauce for. We went to this one spot in Dallas, and I promise you, I didn't use any other sauce. Uh. No, I didn't. I didn't use any sauce. Texas shit just is that smokiness to it. But Memphis shit is good if you like mesquite type shit. But me- definitely Texas. All right, bet, bet, bet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that in mind because I get, I got mad family at Houston. It's just yeah. Oh yeah, they do they do shootings and barbecue very good in Texas. So uh, <laughs> that's that's what they got going for. Bad laws, bad laws, and they don't teach you about niggardry in uh, Texas. So, but they can cook. They can cook. So um. I, I did want to ask, so explain to everybody what the Toxic Tangent podcast is about. So Toxic Tangents is a comedy podcast, right? So you hear the name, it's Toxic, right? Toxic is in the name, but ironically enough, we, we have had productive conversations on it, right? But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a comedy podcast. So just go into it with that mind frame, like, hey, just just relax, chill out with us, kick it, you know, it's fun over here. Um so the whole premise behind it is right. Every everybody is quote unquote toxic nowadays, right? I feel like any any time you really say a, a an opinion about something that's not the quote unquote popular opinion, right? People want to say, "Oh, that's toxic." And I'm like, "Yo, fuck that shit. Fuck it. I'm toxic." Then, uh, so you know what I'm saying? And I think I'm good at going off on tangents. Probably get it from my pops, but whatever. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, 
There's one time I was thinking for a name because I knew I wanted to start a podcast for the longest. I'm just, you know, you just think of something, you know, you just, the wheels is turning and eventually just, I don't know, it just kind of came to me. And so I looked it up, like I'm on Spotify, like, let me, let me search it. Let me make sure there's no other podcast like this. Let me search the IG handles and shit. I'm like, all right, cool. It checks out. All right, let's do it. So yeah, there you go. Toxic, toxic I, tangents. I think niggas don't really realize like the name of the podcast is the most important part like even ours was like we fell into it like the eight more than 92 was a lyric from a song and me and the person i found the co- co- podcast with banks we was we have so many inside jokes that we we just was like when that song first came out we was making a joke you know like oh these niggas these niggas don't want to be eight more than 92 no more here i'm a hundred you know what i'm saying so it's just, but once we said it, like the shit stuck. And we're like, oh, okay, we running with that. Now everybody messes up the name of the podcast, which is even more funnier. Um, it's 895, 92.1, 101.1 to be jams. It's everything but the eight more than 92. But once they get it, and then once they realize what it means, is it definitely makes it way more refreshing. Right. That like you add it. So, it for a second. Exactly. So, um you said you're going for six months what how has it been for the trajectory wise like what are some of the good spots and what are some of the hiccups that you run into uh the good spots is i enjoy podcasting like just the podcasting in and of itself like doing this you know what i'm saying collabing talking about shit, whatever the hell i want um you know that that's fun and it might be weird to some people but i actually kind of like editing the audio because you could get creative. Uh, so to some degree, right. It's, it's kind of art, right? Like you could, you know, throw a little drop or, you know, how I do my little intros and blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? You can get a little bit creative with it. Uh, so I, I like, I like the art part of it, if you will. Um, and you can make it your own. Right. Uh, yeah. but the hiccups, let me see. I would probably say the hardest part to me is just exposure, you know, but I know it comes with time, right? A lot of people, that start this that are not celebrities they uh they pod fade which is like they you know they just fall off because they realize oh shit this is kind of like a job right you know what i'm saying if if you try to you know make it go somewhere and monetize and things like that it, it is it is really a job but think about it if you're making money you got to work for it you know and some people think they could just have fun and talk shit and get paid and not do nothing I'm like eh. It's work, right? Any any yeah. any good thing, you got to work for it. So, um, you know, you just got to come at it with that mind frame. Um, if you are trying to monetize, I know there's a lot of people that they literally just do it for fun. They're like, hey, I, I like networking. I like talking. And I like educating or whatever. And they don't want nothing to come out of it. All right, cool. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at. But, nah, I'm, I'm you know, it, it'll be nice to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, let's, yeah, oh, let's, trust let's, me. let's make I, this I hard work pay off, too. Yeah, you know, it's it's definitely. I think what what I had to tell people is like that that are in the podcast game. But I was like, when I look at all these niggas that made it now, they own five six years down the lane. And so I'd be telling anybody I was like, if you gonna do it, are you prepared to go like two three years of unknown or shopping a mixtape, quote unquote, and do nothing because you're not gonna pop overnight. And right. that that's even hard for me because. We've hit milestones like dang, ain't nobody watching it, but we're just in this popcorn phase of everybody going viral just for saying stupid stuff. And you think like I, I seen one, they weren't stupid, but two niggas went viral for um eating Arby's. And I'm like, bro, I've been doing shit like this for the longest. Cause they said Arby's was actually good. But you know, you never know how they got that clip or how long they've been doing it. You know, you just see other people that do it and then you just got to adapt with the times too. you know what would it being so many i feel like it's hard to get it's hard to really get on if you're not a celebrity because what's the one famous meme i seem all the time it seemed like the government just went to the hood and dropped off podcasts and equipment it seemed like everybody everybody and their mama has a podcast and it's just like what do i do to make myself different and yo that's honestly, crazy exactly that's why i feel that, I I feel that though because you know that's what i'm saying Podcasting been around so what since iPods are, were around, right? Because iPod so. broadcast, yeah. Uh, so what, two thousand seven ish or something like that? I, I think so know. around that time. 
but it didn't really get pop until I wouldn't even say ten years ago, maybe six, seven years ago ish. I don't know. I, I don't yeah. don't quote me on this. But right, but you didn't see too many black podcasters. So I, I definitely feel you with that. Lately there's been a boom in black podcasters, right? Because yeah. we knowing what it is. Like when I started my LLC, the guy he even asked me, like, you on YouTube? What? You on YouTube? You know, because the show's like eighty five South showing, you know, all them popular shows, right? People watch yeah. people watch that, that shit on YouTube. I'm not gonna lie. Black folks, we nigga, niggas, we ain't we ain't in Spotify and Apple Podcasts like that. I'm a I'm a rare breed because I'm an avid podcast listener. That's why I got into this space. But we don't we don't be listening to that. We be on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? And we see like all the smoke, Gilly and them, you know. Facts. That's, that's what I had to. That's that. what I had to realize. I was telling myself. I was telling you this off air. Like I'm putting my work into the YouTube, which you motherfuckers better like, share, and subscribe. All right, goddamn it. I yes, see the sir. audio numbers. So that means y'all niggas is listening somewhere, respectfully niggas. But I need y'all to go to that YouTube page. But I realize that like you got to be able to touch all avenues. Like I'm on all those streaming platforms, but I need to hit the YouTube market, and that's kind of discouraging because it's almost like I'm restarting the brand over. You know what I mean? But uh, it makes me so much better because you know um, I edit all of our videos, and why I keep editing these clips for Instagram. And nobody's seeing it so you know i'm trying to just take my 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 talents to south beach if you want to call it but it's a it's a very hard game to hit that youtube market and it's it you got to be consistent you know what i'm saying and so like you got to constantly post up and i don't think i post enough compared to what i need to be but i'm gonna get there eventually like you said it's it's it seems like we all got it you know and everybody's talking about dumb shit or just you know like it, it's just not a, like we it's almost seemed like if it seemed like if a nigga wanted to ever just come on there and be nasty or something be like you know how do i get this girl pussy to talk let me start a podcast <laughs> and just wild it out you know what i mean like and it's this or if shante ever wanted to talk about how her man wasn't shit you know it's shante's podcast so it's it's just yeah. funny and i want to say kobe probably did it but it's just funny oh, yeah. seeing the dynamic of people because in in the mix of the pool and the pee you know what i'm saying there is some good podcasters out there it's just you got to be like here's here am i but um it's it's definitely it's definitely a worth it experience to me in my opinion you know and i'm pretty sure that you you like the hurdle that it's gone um i'm sorry the the accolades that it's gone to so uh on call for your show who has been toxic this week that you call it who has been toxic on my show or just in general? No, just in general. Like, you know, toxic tangents. You know what I'm saying? What's what's been toxic on your end this week that you done seen? Ooh, shit. Let me think. Let me think. I recently saw um a TikTok video mm -hmm. of this girl. I guess she thought she was putting niggas up on game and she was like, Let me let you guys into a secret. Uh if you bag bad chicks, you uh guess what? bad girls like ugly dudes so you really ain't that good looking i'm like why would you like who gives a fuck we ain't gotta the, be the pretty ones the yeah let me be the let me the funniest people because it's like let, let me let me put you on game i remember one chick was she went viral how to get like this japanese wine that's like nine dollars that's like 20 or 30 percent alcohol or motherfuckers be trying to put you on game on how they commit illegal crimes and i'm like man if this shit go viral you done messed up your own plug because yeah. all you I, that people that i feel like i don't know the use in the camera phone is like toxic itself because <laughs> niggas just don't realize how much snitching y'all are doing like it's a reason why you get on ig or anything and you see the immediate thing that you was possibly thinking pop up without you even having to type it in is because they can hear or they're tracking your movements and you ain't doing nothing but putting yourself right into consumer i used to wonder I was like how the fuck did instagram know to pull this up from amazon or this and that and i'm like bro they they tracking everything that you do and y'all it's just it's just so dumb like how how um what is it called in the matrix everybody is and everybody's stuck on that blue fucking pill damn loop it you you reminded me of them you know them corny ass shows like that pill <laughs> oh yeah exactly them like it, it's just oh, it's just shit. funny 
Okay, so, so that's a that's a difficult thing about podcasting for me is not to fall into that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just I'm not gonna call out the name of these shows because I don't think they pay either one of us. But you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, you know, exactly. You two, the red red pill this, and I'm like, bro, do you even like women? Yeah, <laughs> you must be talking about uh, fresh and fit. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna lie. It's funny because they be having girls on there acting wild. That's why I like some of the episodes. But sometimes I'm like, dude, I gotta change this shit. Like, it's yeah, it's bad. It's shit. bad to an extent. Um, when you're watching it, but it's kind of funny because some of the things that they say on there are true, but it's true to the women that they're talking about. And yeah. like I was watching No Jumper. Uh, it was a clip that went viral when I was on Twitter and it was a girl who basically was like, oh, I'm on this show. I need a three week vacation for my newborn because I'm a single mother. And like and it was and she was saying how much she had made on her OnlyFans. She's like, oh, my OnlyFans is going up and I ain't even put nothing on there. And he was like, well, how much money you make? And so she was like, oh, I made eight hundred dollars, almost a thousand this month. And I ain't did nothing. I was like, girl, that ain't nothing. And he was trying to put her on game, but it's just he went left because he started cussing them out, calling them a bitch and all this stuff. And because one of the girls, she wanted to be a dancer. She just wanted to be a video vixen. He was like, well, why don't you get a manager instead of going out there doing it for free? Because people can just see it as cheap labor. Because the most she was saying she had made on the like dance or coming uh, coming on people's projects was three hundred dollars. And so he was trying to give her free game. But, you know, folks be argumentative. But. Yeah. It's that and fresh and fit have times where they could be intelligent. It's just the message just comes out <laughs> wild. And it's yeah. just funny watching that shit because it's like, I want to know at what point when the cameras go off, do you go back and be like your real self? Yeah, yeah. That's, I, I wonder that sometimes too. Like, you know, are these guys like this all the fucking time? Like, are you yeah. trying to preach to women? That ain't trying to listen to you all the fucking time or what? Yeah, like that shit is that shit is wild. And it's it's kind of like I feel like that's but that's what another thing I've seen about this podcast and shit that's like really, really weird to me. Like I don't do anything more than like I this is genuinely me. You know, I think other than maybe I talk a little less politically correct, I'm cussing a lot more. It's definitely some language that I can't say while I'm recording all the time. But um, people like I'm not a caricature like my my last name. I mean, my name on here is just my last name, you know, and so it's not like I am a moniker myself and I don't come on social media or the podcast or anything. And I don't buffoon myself, give people insights in my lives, sit here and turn into a. A uh, wild and out character, you know, this is the same nigga that you meet in person, you know, other than the fact that some of my words, you'll hear my accent more and I may be less um, energetic in person, but like, it's just so funny. Like, I want to see these people and I'm like, it's no way that ain't nobody try to knock your head off unless they know you and be like, yeah, it's just a character. Right. And I, I just love- go ahead. No. No, I just love how you say character, caricature. I think, yeah, that, that's a lot of people in any type of business, uh, whether it's TV, this or whatever. Um, but no, I, I, I fuck with that. You know what I'm saying? Just being being real. Um, and I get it that, you know, when, when you turn that, when you press record, you know, you got to make sure you have a good show. Fair enough. But exactly what you said, like what? You know what's what's gonna make you stand out from the rest with all these millions of podcasts nowadays is you know just being yourself. Um, so I, I definitely get that, and uh, sometimes I gotta check myself. But even still, I don't know the shit I be posting on my stories is on IG. I'm, it's kind of wild, but but then I think about it like nah, I'm like this all the time. <laughs> I'm just hitting with the record button, which uh, I mean, look, if I need to chill out <laughs> with my personality in general, then that's one thing, but. You know, it is what it is. If niggas were to see what I post on my story versus what I put on the podcast page, you would never like you would never believe that's the same. I mean, it's not a difference of a person, but it's just how much I uh, total line to make sure that there is no backdrop or anything where people be 
this person said this or this person posted this or I'm like, no, nah, that's that's not with me at all. So it's it's definitely it's definitely something that I I am very conscious of to make sure that like I'm authentically me. Like the name and the show kind of hold so much weight to not only do we talk about we're a hundred percent ourselves when we talk about something, but we are a hundred percent ourselves when we are outside of this, you know? So it's it's just it's just I try to make sure that is the most important thing I do. And um I was and I and you know to bring it to you know like how it seemed like people can't separate the two. I was looking at the reason for why the person who attacked Dave Chappelle had attacked him. They had finally let him talk because for some odd reason his dumb ass thought he was going to go in there and plead not guilty and think he going is going to get off. I don't know who is worse in court for this time period. It's between him, Amber Heard's defense attorney or Black China's uh, legal team. But he said the reason why he ran up on stage to get Dave Chappelle is because I guess a joke that he said about the transgender community. It was something that he said during the set that he said triggered him. And he felt that what he said had gone to certain points in his life where he was abused or sexually molested, something to the extent. But when he heard Dave say that, he like went wild. And it was stupid to me because I was like, at a certain point, you know, I don't feel I, I first of all, I don't feel like this is Will Smith's fault for niggas running up on stage. But I feel like at a certain point, niggas, I feel this is why we don't need like a hundred percent freedom on a lot of things, you know, because what niggas don't understand is a hundred percent freedom is chaos. And so for somebody who goes out and hears a comedian say something on stage, you feel like you can run on stage and just attack him. And so when I hear somebody say this and they go out and they act wild one, you don't realize that this person is doing a job. He's in stand up. He's in character mode. So, yes, it's a joke, but you can't separate Dave Chappelle, the comedian, from Dave Chappelle, the person who goes home, who has thoughts, who is maybe an activist or whatever he is. You can't separate the two. You just see red and attack. And, um, you know, your, your, your viewpoint from that is just you are justified because of your pain to go up there and attack him. And um, this kind of is why I have a real beef with like the presence of how much people press mental health is because this is a mental issue that you've been allowed to express yourself in. The more and more we've expressed ourselves with doing shit, this is what it leads to. Okay, you talk about mental health. You say you're triggered by something. You say you're enraged. You're saying this. Now you have an outburst because you're promoting it with just expressing it, but not going to all the other avenues of how to properly treat mental health. And this ain't a mental health issue to me. This is accountability issue. Yes, somebody says something triggering to you, but that don't give you the right to act a fucking fool and do something illegal because the police could trigger you something that you're going to run up to a policeman and tackle his ass. You probably won't. And, um, that's what you know when i see that i just you know like i said it, it ties back to people not knowing how to decipher between the two you know have you have you uh heard his little stance on it who dave Chappelle? no the person that attacked him oh no i haven't and i think oh. that dude's a uh, uh he's weak I'm, I'm, I'm using my words wisely but yeah i think i think he's weak for that you know uh i i love how you said accountability right so you can go up there and fight whoever you want to you can punch whoever you, you can do whatever you want to this is america but guess what exactly what you said you're gonna be held accountable in some type of way he might he might punch you in the face too you might have to square up or you might get tackled by security or you might get thrown out the club like people forget that part so exactly what you said like you could express yourself however you want but you can't control how people respond to what you said or did. Everybody thinks that we're, we're, we're in a time now where you could say whatever you want, do whatever you want and get nothing for it. And that you're not supposed to get any consequences. I'm like, nah, there will be consequences, but they don't, they don't tell that to everybody. So I don't know. Shit, people, 
I think that's why people's wilding kind of lately. Yeah, I just think there's like it's like basically everybody is at home alone and their parents is out for the weekend and you just throw a party and you seen uh Project X? Yeah. Okay, they wild out at Project X. Dope experience. Oh, yeah. And then motherfuckers set the neighborhood on fire. They had all these expenses and stuff to do and they don't have a Project XX where it show like the complete backlash of like how much he had to pay or what his record was or how his fa- family probably moved to a poor neighborhood because the expenses kind of took all their money. But it's just like it's just this stuff in general. Everything that somebody does is is not held to it's like you're encouraged to speak your mind, but you're not being taught that when you speak your mind, it it may not be received or it may be consequences. You know, you can't say you can't walk into a blood neighborhood and say, fuck blood. And you got on blue flag and just think that you could walk to your car and be like, well, I was told to just say what was on my mind. It's the same with a blood walking to a crib neighborhood. Like you, you going to get your ass whooped. So is it, it, if not worse, you may not, you ain't going to make it to the car. I can put you that way. I just put it like that. If you thought you was making it back to that Honda, Honda Accord, you know what I'm saying? You're not making it back to that. But um, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and it's just like, um, it's just that, like, everybody wants to say something on some, like Kevin Samuels, perfect example. His mother had to find out about his death on the internet, and everybody celebrated it. We celebrated his death more than we celebrated Trump getting out of office. Yeah, I mean, we probably, we, hmm? I was, I don't know. I saw people celebrate. I, I wasn't one of the ones celebrating it. Yeah, no, I didn't either. But we saw, we they celebrated it more than when they killed bin Laden. They did it way more than they celebrate that more. They celebrate his death more than motherfuckers celebrate Kwanzaa and Juneteenth, you know? And it was so funny that niggas literally hate him because Kevin Samuels told you something and told you to essentially be accountable for it. Whether his wordplay was derivative or rude or you didn't care about it in general it was still the message of it was always to be accountable in what you do you know and the fact that he told and it was it was i'm gonna tell you exactly what it was it was hurt women and the sap ass niggas that wanted to get with the hurt women when they see that window <laughs> you know because it's probably gonna get curved by the hurt women too Exactly. It's still going to get curved by them hurt women, you know, because they, they were broke. You know what I'm saying? Oh, 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 oh. And then as soon as they get curved, this is what Kevin was talking about. So, you know, them niggas is lying anyway. Those are the only two people I feel that were hurt. I mean, they had something to say negative, but it's like you hate when you, did, you do get held to an accountable standard. And it's just from the messenger, because like I've said this multiple times. Them people, he didn't just come giving free advice of accountability and just was attacking people. He, they paid for that. They paid for that tongue lashing. You know what I'm saying? Like this wasn't no free, this wasn't no free ass whooping that y'all was getting with verbal, with verbal assaults. You was, you paid, I think it was like a thousand dollars for a consultation. Well, I don't think his consultations were, were live like that. I, I, I think that part was free, but he did give. Um, you know, paid consultations. I, I met a girl who um, who talked to him. She said, you know, she paid for a, a consultation and shit. According to her, he, I forget exactly what she said, but uh, this is coming from her that she had told me that he said that she was basically good with what she's trying to do, and I don't, I don't all the way believe her because um, she goes, she went a little bit against what he was about. She wasn't the smallest girl. Well, she wasn't the biggest, but I'm like, come on. I know you lied. I know you. I know that man told you to get on that treadmill for a little bit, but I, right, I'll let you get that off. <laughs> no, no, she was, she was beautiful. I, I, I ain't talking about nobody's weight. There's, there's beautiful people, all weights. I'm not that toxic. <laughs> you can be cute. You can be cute with your little fat ass. I see you, girl. <laughs> ain't, nothing wrong, ain't nothing wrong with that. Like, you know, oh, okay, damn, Nick, only there. niggas get... Bony niggas, black like, niggas, you little bony ass. You cute though. Like it, everybody, everybody can be cute, whatever their body type is. You just 
Come on now, yeah. bring it. You know, we ain't talking about her specifically, but you know, I yeah. see you six uh, hundred pound fine ass. I got you. Six hundred pound. Oh, come on. Yo, yo health, yo health is borderline going to see Jesus, but you know, you still, I see you thickums. If you make it through the night, you know what I'm saying. Hit my lineup. You know. But. I dare, I dare you to post a a, a six hundred pound fine woman. I dare you to find 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 a photo, put it on your IG. I dare you. I don't even want to go through like if if niggas will, if somebody was to get my like history, um and see that, so like uh my work my work, my um my Gmail or whatever you know how you log into Google, so that's attached to my work computer because I've logged in there and so I don't want nobody to see and go through my search history and been like fine as six hundred pound woman and the motherfucker who fuck he into you know say you. You got you some type of health hefty fetish, but um, it's it's some cute ones. In there, six hundred pounds though. That's a hippo. No, 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 no. I ain't talking about big women. I love big women. But six hundred pounds. Come on now. I mean, hey, you know. Let me let me just stop this right here before people. She got a, she got a thyroid <laughs> problem. I'm not about to holler at nobody. Nobody six hundred pounds. But I just know that it's cute. Big people is cute. Small people. I don't think cute is just relative. To like small stature, because you know some of these people with these BBL booties look like Shrek and Donkey had a baby, and just like they got they didn't stick with they thick ass. So I mean it ain't it ain't big booties and hips don't mean that you gonna be a dime piece. So but uh, I definitely I just definitely hate like this whole unaccountableness that we're getting as we sit here and promote only the positive sides of mental health because if you see even and even this is not like a good thing to happen but you saw what happened in buffalo and then you saw what happened in um texas most recently everybody wants to point to the me mental aspect of it and we and when, when i say everyone i mean white people um and right i don't want to leave y'all out in the dark you know because i want to shout out to the cool white people out there that I am friends with, I do get along with, but the fools, this is who I'm talking about, the foolish white people, the foolies. Um, we know good and goddamn well that a black person could never get the mental aspects of something mentally was wrong or whatever was going through his life that y'all purposely, continuously try to parade for every person other than black. Because I remember when Harambe, the little boy fell into the tank and Harambe grabbed him for some odd reason, the father's criminal history came in the past for a damn kid falling in the zoo. Like that, like if his daddy wasn't a criminal, he wouldn't have been playing over the rail. But when the little boy from Buffalo, ain't no boy, grown ass man, grown ass domestic terrorist went up in Buffalo and decided to have a live Call of Duty game and kill people, even killed the person taken up for it, which are they selling like body armor? on like amazon two right. for one that's, that's what like, i thought like where do you get that shit? like you know what i'm saying is that illegal for citizens to have that i, I apparently I it's like legal but it seemed like everybody and their mama got, i don't even i don't even keep the pass from football practice so i'm trying to figure out where y'all getting like all this body armor like for the and then on top of that if you send it to a domestic house the parents don't see the body armor the people ordering don't seem see it it's like you know how like before yeah. you go into a porno site they ask you are you 18 or do you know <laughs> this i don't get yeah. how y'all selling high grade body armor and not doing like the same y'all do more checks to get on Pornhub and x videos than y'all do for a nigga to go out here and buy uh, armories and you got his addresses in the suburbs That's like I'm, I'm, I, I'm i'm trying to figure this out and it seems like every time it's like well, what was wrong with him mentally he races bitch god damn he trifling nigga like what, what you what you need for him to say like it, it it doesn't make sense and apparently uh asian grocery store or church got shot up right after the buffalo damn i didn't know that damn yeah so yeah, it's like these kids ahead. are getting dude, they're way out of control like i just want to look at these nra motherfuckers these gun rights people and like okay Let's at least meet on common ground. Like there's something wrong, right? Like at least meet on common ground. We have we have an issue, cause that's that's wild. There there, I posted something not too long ago. I said there's these mass shootings have gotten way out of control. The fact that I'm even posting that, like that statement in and of itself is wild. We shouldn't have mass shootings. You see what I'm saying? But yeah, this is this is this is wild.
that's almost like if we went like on a rape spree and was like yo we got to chill out with all these raping people you know what i'm saying like that's crazy as fuck that you got to post that yeah and um i think it was ted cruz it was some republican in texas he was like yeah it sucks that these money amount of people died but it could have been worse I'm like, nigga, what you are fuck? wilding. Like, I seen a video uh, or a picture that some woman posted that a guy had volunteered to stand outside of the school to make sure that nobody suspicious went into the kid's school. I don't get and, no, that's, the, that's a police job, not you. Exactly. Well, fact of the matter that we're uh, over here putting up thank you for him watching the kids going to school is really fucking ridiculous to me yeah. when you think about this. Like, Niggas can't go to. Th- it was a couple more days left in school, and them kids were watching Moana. And I don't give a fuck what this person was doing. I'm tired of the mental health aspect. He came. He went to a elementary school and killed kids. What were the right. kids doing to him that he couldn't go handle Absolutely his nothing. his fucking bullies? Like you got all you got all this grown man energy to take the kids. And even if we do like the whole NRA screening people for, you know, background checks and everything, Charlemagne said this on the Breakfast Club, that doesn't eliminate hate. Right. And I feel like the longer and longer that we go with addressing everything but like white racism, in this case, he was a Hispanic, but I don't care, um, domestic terrorist situations in this country is just like it's it's what we gonna get with this because right after this they were promoting like somebody said this i know more about the johnny depp and angela i mean uh amber heard trial than i know what's going on in the fucking country it's like we want to keep shifting it off of this and this has been three weeks three four weeks in a row where a bunch of people have to go and condition themselves to something completely different you know like we can't um we can't go home at least they can't go home like they were because there's a family member that didn't come to that and so and i also want to feel like what is so important about a gun that everybody feels that we need to protect our second amendment to bear arms when y'all clearly have shown y'all know how to act right like i'll be honest and it you can edit this part out if you want. I'm going to get toxic. So this whole accountability thing, it comes from white people. And even the whole mental space thing, right? For so long, white people are used to saying and doing whatever the fuck they want. And nothing really happens to them like like it would us, right? So now, and we're, we're taking that mental health aspect, you know, as black folks and stuff, which is good, but... We're taking the wrong. We're, we shouldn't be taking the lack of accountability part, and that's to me. I think that's where all this shit is coming from, partially, uh, because they're they're kind of disseminating that whole lack of accountability out to everybody, and that's that's unhealthy. You should teach mental health. You should you know put an emphasis on that, but put an emphasis on it with accountability. Exactly what you've been saying this whole episode, like accountability is so important right like as men we know this that's that to be honest that's a big part of being a man right is accountability like it's like and you know i was talking to when we was talking about this at work i was talking to this girl and she's white um when when she speaks on things you can see the clear racial difference in her life in my life or anybody of color the fact that you know, white people are so unjust or so indignant to think that they have these. Well, you can't do this to me. You can't do that. I won't stand. If this would have happened to me, what I would have done. It's like it's almost a it's not even a fair of ignorance because that's literally what they're afforded to. Like they didn't like what was happening in Spain and Europe. They left because they didn't want somebody telling them what to do or how to do it, or they felt they didn't need to listen to a king or king, queen. And they was like, you know, I want to do what I want. But when they did come, what did they do? They took over land and told and and forced out the indigenous people here. They brought slaves over and told them what they wanted to do. And the moment that uh, Abraham Lincoln on them said that, you know what, slaves would not be beneficial. Let them be their own people. Who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? A civil war started. 
So it's right. just like it's it's like every time, like you know, they didn't want Trump to lose the president, so they ran their ass into the Capitol. They can get out the car and go back and forth with a policeman and still live. If right. I take my hands off of the steering wheel to go give you my ID, I'm gonna be on a t-shirt. They can sit there and ask for a badge number, they can do whatever they want to, and then when it's something because the only reason why they could do something wrong, it has to be a mental issue. That's how they're that's how they're um wired. Yet there's a little boy in the UK that lost his finger that told everybody that he was getting bullied. And he ran and lost his finger. His immediate action was not to go shoot up a school. And he probably has mental issues, but yet it's always what is, what is, what is. We're telling you what it is, but you don't want to do anything. Yet when these things happen, it ain't black people shooting up schools. I just want y'all to get this out of the way. We ain't shooting up the markets. We ain't doing any of this. Or even like when, when that boy Peyton Grindon got taken out alive. You should have massacred him in the fucking store. You know, and I'm not are, sitting are over you here talking about in King Supers in Boulder, Colorado. No, I, not I was a different dot because I look. I'm in Colorado, and I hate to say, it, but that's where this shit started, Columbine. Uh, no, this was a this was a Buffalo shooting. Okay, he okay, that guy. he All didn't. Right. I only think the guy in in Texas got shot because he was Hispanic. If he was white, he probably would have got taken in alive. But like the guy in Buffalo who shot up the grocery store tops, he got mm-hmm. taken out alive. How can you go kill seven right. people and get taken out alive and go through the justice justice system? It's bullshit. Like that makes no sense to me. That is fucking wild to me. Like you can sit there and massacre people and still go through legal process. It's, it's, it's fucking bullshit. Like just just what you said. If if, if it was black, would have got turned into Swiss cheese on site. Like what the hell? They would have learned how to. I don't give a fuck. Body armor my ass. They would have learned how to headshot. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Magically, they would have turned into great marksmen. It was bullshit. And did you hear the response? Like, so basically, the the Texas the the law the Texas report was saying that when the guy first got there, that he had a standoff with a cop and the cop lost, but there was no cop there, and that guy was in that school for forty minutes before somebody responded. That's yeah. like that's all, and they got caught lying. It's, unless you kept, you know, the, the, the reporters kept pressing and pressing and pressing them. And he got caught lying. It was the same when that woman tried to call for the active shooter in Buffalo. The dispatcher was like, why are you whispering? And she hung up on her. And her boyfriend had a call and called the cops up there for something to happen. And then Ted Cruz is having this little debate. And when people are pressing him about the issues, he doesn't want to. He says, you have your own agenda. Or the agenda is, y'all are bullshit. Y'all thought process is bullshit. It's not always as simple as a, a background check because how many times have we all faked it when we went to a job interview knowing we don't we we are a terrible hire? You know, like we need the money for the time, but knowing we are a terrible hire for the job that they want us to be at this current moment. We know how to fake it for when it gets through. But it what so what is a background check gonna do? That's more entitlement to me. What what do you feel that a background check is going to tell you? If I was going there, who the fuck is going to fill out a gun application or a background check and say, do you feel like you want to shoot up something? Right. Yes. Like who the fuck is going to sit there and say that, you know? Right. But if I'm getting if I'm getting a AR-15 or an M4, I would have a lot of questions. What do you need this for? What shouldn't it, it shouldn't even be legal to have those as citizens. I'll just say it. That's that's my opinion. Some people are like, nah, fuck that. I'm, I'm gonna have my guns. I believe in protection, right? But come on, man. An automatic assault rifle, bro. Only, is, bro. And I'm only saying this because we've seen what happens when, when citizens have these weapons as they don't know how to act with them. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's kind of like uh, in school when everybody, I don't know, was doing some little thing. Like, let's say everybody was trading Pokemon cards. I remember when I was in, like, second grade, everybody was doing that. And it got out of control. Motherfuckers was fighting over them things. The teacher said, all right, no more Pokemon. It's kind of one of them things. Like, all right, if we knew how to act with guns, it would be cool. But we clearly shown that we don't know how to act with guns. So it's like, all right, let's start taking the guns away a little bit. It sucks. But I'm not I'm not one of those heavy second amendment, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like I said, uh, 
protect yourself, right? But there's there's a limit, you know. Why do why do you need all these guns in your house? You know what I'm saying? Like shit is getting shit has been out of control. It's like what I don't get is like what a kid. If you give a kid a drink and you tell him don't spill it, and he spills it, you take the drink away until he can right. show that he's proven it more. Well, what about like what is uh, there's a chart, right? Out of 2022, there are 288 school shootings. That's fucking wild. You know how much every other country has? Zero. No, they got more. They got some, but it's less than okay. double digits. I think the f- closest high is like six or eight. 288 fuck? to eight. Like that is fucking wild to me. And so this is how I would do it. If we're gonna do any type of gun, because you're not gonna ain't nobody gonna take the guns, because I promise you, them old country white, you're not gonna take our guns. You're gonna have to come in here and get it with my dead body. And trust me, I got ammo to lock over this whole fucking fortress. So that's exactly <laughs> how they're gonna do this. Yeah, you would yeah, you would the you in the south, so I know I think people that it's, are not from the south that listen is like don't be fooled. Like them them back. You know them country motherfuckers in the backwoods. Trust me, that's 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 where you might have some problems. Exactly like over here in Colorado, liberal ass Colorado. Well, shit is kind of sweet. You know what I'm saying? That's probably why a lot of people are moving here. But yeah, we we don't have to, we don't have to deal with a lot of shit that are that's in a lot of a lot of states for real. Yeah, like how I would try to fix it is this: I would say if you ever have to use a m4 or buy if you ever buy like an m4 assault rifle you would need to register it with like a homing beacon or something that lets somebody knows when it comes out like an ankle bracelet for people who are on house arrest you would need to have some type of chip in there that shows what is being used for and it has to be under extreme duress for you to explain it me i would make it damn near impossible like you you notice there's no crime in other countries because the penalties are so fucking harsh like you could go to, like I'm in the military, so I've been to Japan. You could literally walk out and people's car doors are unlocked and people's house doors are unlocked because there's no crime. Because if you get caught for anything, you're doing 25 years and this extreme fucking prison, like what uh, Bruce Wayne had to go through in the Dark Knight trilogy in the first one, the dark, uh, the Batman rises like that's how terrible it is. Fish out of fucking bucket inhumane conditions because you broke the law. That's what I would do it here. And if you say, well, what if I want to hunt? Wherever you're hunting at needs to have a rent and go gun station. Meaning like any gun that you're going to use here today needs to be rented out. So I would make the conditions so strict and so severe. Like if you see somebody about to wild out, you're going to whoop his ass. Because like, bro, I'm not about to do this because you want to come out here and be Hitler. Like, bro, like that's how you can control it. Like, you can bear arms, yes, but the penalties and stuff are going to be so fucking severe that you might as well be like, I don't even want it. It's like going to New York. You don't even take a gun to New York because the gun laws are so extreme. Right, right, right. But they, they do have a decent amount of shooters there, right? Not as much as per capita as like uh, places in the Midwest, right? Like Oh, yeah, they have. They have. Stuff, right? I mean, of course, you know, you always going to have shootings, but if you get yeah. caught with a gun, like Lil Wayne, how he had to go to jail for it, you're going to jail. Like, yeah. that's automatic. So, like, a gun charge in New York is like, eh. and it's just, it's just so fucking wild. People are talking about equipping a teacher with a gun or teaching. Like, who the hell is going to want yeah. to go? And, like, I was like, why? If it gets to that extreme, I got to do that to my teacher to have a gun. Also, we see teachers wilding out on students. And you yeah. see from the police pulling us over, we we don't know what y'all identify as a threat because we I may handle a situation different than you. So why would I equip a teacher who has a gun to shoot and then she fuck around thinks she threatened by the student, she shoots the student or he or whatever. You know, that, that just makes so much. They do everything but fucking handle the fucking business because it's like you want. I think Steve Kerr said it best. You want to stay in power. And guns give you power, the law, the power to hold guns, people's freedom or permissions with guns over is so powerful. You know what I'm saying? Like they getting a hard on for this. You know, everybody in there is getting uh, a chub off this shit. Yeah. And it's it's ridiculous. It's crazy. So um, fuck them. Fuck the people <laughs> defending all. He even shot his grandma. Y'all still want to talk about this mental health shit. So right. fuck all that type shit. Do the right fucking thing. And for and once, I'm saying, 
Go ahead. Was it, wasn't he bullied? He said he was bullied or something yes. like that? Yeah, he said he was bullied. Fuck that shit. Like, yo, you know how many people was bullied? Like, I know we this episode ain't about bullying, but I don't know. I, I'm not all the way sold on that anti-bullying shit. Because motherfuckers, kids used to get bullied even worse, you know, before, right? But there were no school shootings and shit. Exactly. Right? There were no call line back then. It was like, you learn how to deal with it. You know, so I, I don't know. That's a, that's a cop out. That guy, that guy's a bitch. He's a coward, and I hope he gets. He, I think he deserves to get the death sentence. You know, I feel like that's um, letting him off easy. Oh no, that guy, he dead. The one who shot the school up, he's dead. But the guy, um, in Buffalo, he's still alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah that guy. I mean, I, my punishment for the guy in Buffalo would be take him to a black part of the jail. And let him get his ass whooped every day until he was sitting up. It, 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 that would be ain't no death penalty. That's the easy way out. Because he know you know your ass when you walking in to do something like that, you probably won't make it out alive. So he knows for a fact that he probably didn't think to live too long. So don't send him to jail where he could get with his white Aryan brothers and do all right. that extra shit. Send him to the nigga wing and let's see how he <laughs> sit there and toe tap all that white power shit with them. Because yeah, he gonna does. be seeing he gonna be seeing white to God, but they are gonna bring him back like, no, nah, nigga, you ain't you ain't dead yet. But that was right, my that, spiel. That goes so, back to the the whole white, you know, privilege accountability thing, right? Mm -hmm. He knows that he's white and that he could do that and prop and walk out alive, which he did. Oh, easily, right? So he he knew at a certain point, like, okay, I'm done, killing spree over. Like what? Before Black Lives Matter turned into what it is now. It was Antifa. So come on, fuck out of here. Like they know what they're doing. So um I did find one funny one more funny one. So LeBron James's son, Bronny, went to prom and he had a white girl with him, I'm assuming. Uh -oh. And so uh they sent uh -oh. the internet ablaze uh -oh. because <laughs> so and one of the people that got caught up into it was Shannon and Dr. Umar, but um and Shannon basically said that he did not see a problem with Bronny going to the prom with somebody he liked. He said he understands that, you know, stand with the race and everything. But sometimes you can sit there and be with somebody and be miserable for all your life because you want to oh, stay inside the race. He had to go that way. So I personally didn't have a problem with that. He said, let him be happy. He said, um, I don't like he the don't have miserable part. Like, well, he so I I feel like I, I can get that one. I can see where he meant for that. But um, he said so. He said people. He said he's tired. We have as a people, we try to be too woke and we try to always count other. Like y'all not the ones dating whoever he dating with. And it's been plenty of times where just because you are staying in the race doesn't mean you have problems. So he said basically he's a kid. Let him be a kid. What does it matter? You don't know who he'll end up with, but. Just because you end up with somebody in the same race doesn't mean you're ultimately going to have a better life. And so, um, so he had, he had, uh, so somebody had faked a quote from Dr. Umar Johnson and they got back and forth into it about it. But it was basically, I mean, I personally thought it was weird how much everybody comes to. I'm now the one I seen, I was like, oh, white girl. But then I also thought about where he's at and who's around him. Right. And Aren't somebody they in gets, Hollywood or something in the hills. Yeah, he in Cali. California. He in California. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's like nice rich part. Who you think he got over there? That's his classmates. Yeah. Like, damn. Yeah, that was what was that was and somebody said something also to me. A lot of times, like black women do make fun of black men and call them corny or certain type of things because they aren't at that level to where they're conditioned to be the men that they want. And I have seen where white girls just accept you for that. So a lot of times there are times where black men go to white women because they don't make them feel weird about themselves. They fat, they like them. They found something good with them. Like even Amari Hardrick said, now all y'all mad because I'm ghost or I'm who I am now. But when I was this person in the day, y'all didn't want to talk to me. You know, I, I tried to go, but they didn't want to talk to me. Who talked to me? This white girl talked to me. And I, I get that. And even for Shannon's viewpoint, you know, um, just because you are with somebody in your race does not mean you'll have a happily ever after. Now, me personally, you know, um, because this is going to go to interracial dating, or I, I could ask you this person, but how do you feel about interracial dating? Uh, to me, 
I personally don't care too much. Just don't coon out. You know, like to me, there's a difference between proximity and like, bro, you kind of a coon. Like you think some, some, like you've fallen into some stereotypes that white people have put on you about yourself. So I've, I've definitely seen that, you know, and I, I, I definitely don't agree with that. I fucking hate that shit. And then there's a difference between proximity, like kind of like it sounds like in this kid's situation, that sounds like it's proximity. Like, like, yo, if, damn, there are all the girls over here to, to date happen to be a different race. Like, come on, man. So, eh, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I don't have no kid. But when I finally do have kids, I want to be black. Uh. I mean, I know the the name of your podcast is Eight More Than Ninety Two, but we probably probably got enough Drakes in this world. <laughs> oh shit, was that toxic? Uh, <laughs> look, nah, I, I, I oh shit, it. no, no, no. Hey, look, shout out to shout out to everybody. Shout out to all the black. Don't backtrack now. Don't backtrack now. Whether you are Michael don't Black play, skin, skin or 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 you know he or, hates or skin Julius color. said enough with you mulattoes. All right. Oh shit, nah, I didn't use that word. I did not use that word. I didn't even grow up saying the L word, like. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, I, I you know, you, you see what I'm saying? No, there's there's a difference between like guys who it's like for some reason they the way they mind thing is like just off, and then um you know just proximity. Like I said, I'm in Colorado, bro. Like it's proximity a lot of times. I went to Atlanta. I'm like, damn, I fucking love Atlanta. I mean that that's a whole nother side tangent because the girls in Atlanta is just damn they, they got high caliber. Anyways, uh but yeah, that that's that's why I, I think about interracial dating. I mean my my brother, he's he's I don't think he's married to her, but she's a white chick. And I see how my family reacts to it. I don't really think they care. I think they just they really don't give a fuck. Um uh, and she She's not racist. I'll say that because, you know, there's some and th- this is what I want to tell a lot of brothers. Is like I had a conversation with one of my homies. I'm like, OK, he he just moved here from New York and shit. And he's talking about the white chicks. And he was like, damn, they, they bad as hell out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, OK. And we, we were on the same page with this. And he, he said, I said, All right, do you think any of them are going to take you home to to their parents? And he's like. Oh, I'm like, but we, wait, would you take one of them home to the mom and pop? He said, no. I'm like, all right. So that's exactly what it is. A lot of times it's like, okay, fuck you. They'll fuck you. They'll have fun. You know what I'm saying? They'll do all that shit. Party with you, all that kind of wild shit. But guess what? At the end of the day, it ain't finna be real. Like, I've seen this shit in college. Like, little little chicks, you know, they, they smash into the dudes, the black dudes on the football teams and basketball teams and shit. And guess what? My senior year. They got them a Connor, you know, to bring to the graduation party and, you know, all clean cut. Like, yeah, you see what I'm saying? So, yeah, I think if you if you go a day outside your race, just just make sure you peep shit. Don't be ignorant. You know what I'm saying? No, no. Why this person? Are they with you for you or is it because of some type of fetish type of situation? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. That's when it gets weird. I'm like, ah. I don't know. At the same time, look, it's 2022. Like, they do whatever makes you happy, I guess, right? Like, there's people dating the, the same gender, dating other, you know what I'm saying? Dating whatever. Like, do whatever you want, whatever makes you happy, right? Uh, I'm just saying, just, just make sure you know it's real, you know? And I'll be honest, dating, you know, black women, it feels realer in general you see what i'm saying that's just that's just for me personally i say i i don't have i've had more of a problem with it but i think that's because i feel like people try to portray it as if every two to three person is every two one out of one out of four people has an interracial relationship um especially like black women and white men like i don't see it that often but i also feel that like watching disney channel like that cheaper by the dozen it had to be a mixed family or 
um what was i watching the other day something but it seems like i said you know you watch a lot of tv they just make it seem like that's just such the norm and i don't have i, I feel that, that yeah i feel that like it's an agenda to promote but it seems like it's more it on the uh the white the black woman side getting with white men i don't think that that many black women like are attracted to white men me personally i, I know niggas are definitely attracted to white women um <laughs> And shit, no. hell, you even see the women for the WNBA. They attracted to white women. So obviously there's a, a <laughs> stigma to where athletes of both both sports are attracted to white women. So I just feel that I think that there is a easiness and a necessity to when you date white because they don't see the two the what a black man has to go through. They just see an attractive skin and they see something of interest and they just see you for maybe an attraction to an extent right now do they how far they see you out in their plans i don't know i will say that it is less of a headache that i've seen or even have dealt with because i've messed with a white girl in my life definitely came back home but there's an ease of navigating with a white girl whether it's just to get with her whether it's just to keep it it's so much simpler and you have to do less of a headache then sometimes having to put in the work to be with a black woman. I do know that. So I also, and also, like I said earlier, sometimes. So in so, other words, you said black women ain't, ain't easy. I think that's a good thing. <laughs> I think that is. I think that is. But you got to think for the time that what you're trying to get with a black woman. If you're just trying to uh, fuck in high school and college yeah. and stuff, and they're making you having to commit and everything, that's nothing wrong. They just care about who they're with. They don't want to be somebody baby mama. They don't want to <laughs> do all this. They make you work for the pussy. <laughs> exactly. I mean, they make you work for and that's nothing wrong. But I mean, we we we're not going to sit here and act like every nigga want to sit there and go through that all that work when they know that it's easier options. And I'm not saying that's nothing wrong with it. Also, like you said, proximity, who you're around. I will say I do have a problem with when niggas get I've been around people that be like, I, I don't date black girls. I don't do this. I, that's that's the one thing. Like you said, cool. I, I do. I do have a problem with that because it's it's nothing like seeing somebody beautiful in your own skin. But if you do end up with somebody else, it's how your heart felt with them. So that part of Shannon's argument, I get you can't sit there and tell somebody it's a lot of niggas with black women that are miserable with their black women you know what i'm saying they're going through baby mom issues they're going through a divorce they're going there's whatever a lot of niggas with white women. but there's a lot i was gonna say that but there's a lot of niggas there's a lot of niggas there's a lot of niggas with white men that are with white women that are miserable i.e johnny depp and amber heard i just right. think that we put too much emphasis as a people and it's nothing wrong with that i think we should but sometimes to a certain extent before we sit there we're putting too much emphasis on a 17, 18 year old boy going to prom. That's yeah, what we, that, we that's what I don't like. This is a child. That, yeah, like, it's a off. child. You know what I mean? Like we get it now. When he get older, I'm like, eh, I ain't, you know, like like Patrick Mahomes is the number one black star quarterback. Oh, he carried to. Yeah, I, I I wanted to emphasize that, but I don't care for Patrick Mahomes. But I didn't want to disrespect him on this episode. But you know, he married to a white girl, you know. But Travis Kelsey was with a black man. I mean, a black woman. Y'all was giving him all this praise. Y'all figured out he was only giving her a hundred dollars to go do anything for their entire relationship. I do think that there is a I was happy when they broke up. Oh, I mean <laughs> I, 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 she fine. But I think right. that there is something that black people don't realize that you get. And that's like you said earlier, a comfortability. Now, there are times when you can get with somebody of different classes, and just because you're black, you don't mix. You know, there's an awkwardness. You can't be yourself. Oh, I want to do X, Y, and Z. But because I know somebody from Colorado that doesn't get what it's like to deal with somebody down south, it's just a difference in culture, you know, but it's still black at the end of the day. So I think that people lose the fact that there is a benefit of being with your culture. You know the plight, you know the joys, you know everything. There's nothing weird about bringing in someone um, of the same race versus someone out of race because people are on their toes or they're not really themselves. It is so much easier to deal with somebody that is going through what you deal with. To which I say I support more of regular race relationships than I do interracial relationships because depending on who it is, I feel like that is a cop out because they're never going to get what it's like to be right. 
you and you'll never get what it's like to it's be the them lack of accountability exactly you know it's like do they really care um is he gonna be doing too much by trying to be come the quote-unquote come to the barbecue is she gonna be out of her touch with her roots like you know you get fuck around get your candace owens or kamala harrison kamala harris with a white man you know all these like where where do you fit with that and i just feel that i think that keeping our culture alive and not letting it be watered down like i see with all these mixed families on disney I see them celebrating family, but are you going into them African roots with them? You know, right. like when Blackish had the episode where Bo's dad was white. I don't know if you watched it, but he made sure that she knew she was a black woman. He knew from a cow, like, I always knew you was black. So you don't disqualify them from their actual roots, but there aren't everybody isn't like that. Some people would just right. raise their kids. Um, to be just to have that kids. white privilege, even exactly. Though just have a, a mixed child, and it doesn't yeah. work because like not the, all the way white. Exactly, like the Colin Kaepernick show where he wanted to get braids, but his family thought that that was too much, and like they didn't get like the racial slurs of him getting followed or him saying that he looked dirty because he had braids, and they don't get what it's like. But if he was with a black family, he would be able to embrace that. You get what I'm saying? That's what yeah. you don't get when you you interracial date and you take it outside of the norm. Now you can get these cool corn, corn fed ass niggas who are black on black on black and still don't get it. So I'm not saying just because you a hundred percent in the culture means that everybody's going to get you. I E Carlton or, you know, on the fresh Prince and newer show, all that. Like when you get to a certain stature, you quote unquote, lose touch with the culture. Carlton so it's black girl. Though. Yeah, he was, but oh, you know, he man. wasn't, he wasn't he wasn't identified so it's not like it's a hundred percent but i think that what people are saying and i said is we've gone through enough let's not lose who we are in the spectrum of streams let's keep our heritage alive because when you bring everybody in just like the episode of atlanta um when he took her to that nigerian to restaurant to get jollof they end up changing it and taking and putting their own spin on nigerian culture and that is what happens when you let other people of the not with no melanin into your culture they're going to do it their way it's the reason why they say make them quotes about oh i put season on there oh it's just a little extra salt you know when you when you have things done a certain way you need to make sure that you are putting yourself in the environment to have your lineage be continue on and whether that's your last name your culture your um island or country where you're from it needs to continue to uh, full total uh, totality without any type of misinterpretations from anybody else. That's my take on it. No, big facts. I, I agree with all that shit, man. Now, you can fuck them white girls. I ain't saying that you can't. You know what I'm saying? Just know Over that if you get, like my mama always say, if she don't use a comb, don't Ooh. bring her home. You know what I'm saying? Bang, 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 bang. No. So that is, that is the ultimate way. Have your fun. You know, and then bring it home. But if that ain't who you meant to be with, that's on you. I'm not fucking her, so you can do what you want to do. So, right. I, I think we could. Uh, did you have anything else that you want to uh, go? Uh, no, no, oh, no. Oh, okay, so I think we that was a cool stopping point, man. I appreciate you uh, definitely coming on. Just this was a, a fun time. Um, hopefully, when we do this again, if you want to come back on, you and your co-host come through. We can rock this shit out. Um, let everybody know where to find you at. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Toxic Tangents Pod. Uh, wherever you're listening to this show, eight more than ninety-two. Just search Toxic Tangents Podcast. You'll find me. You know, hit that hit that follow button just like you follow this podcast. Is 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 dope ass conversation? Except obviously we get way more toxic. And uh, <laughs> but no, no. Thank thank you for having me on. This this is this is a lit podcast for sure. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for reaching out, man. I'm glad you want to. It's still an honor for, you know, motherfuckers want to fuck with us for our show. So um, I'm glad that you are on. Make sure y'all follow the Toxic Tangy podcast on all streaming platforms. You go on Apple, um, Google, Spotify. Like you just said, make sure you follow my IG. Give them a listen to and send it to everybody you know. You watching the NBA today? Yeah. Who you pulling for? I think Boston going to get them. I, I, thought, I thought they was gonna close them out last game. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, what the fuck? Come on, dude. No, nah, Buck is 47. I think that now the only thing I'm I'm rooting for Miami, but the fact that you gotta let Jimmy keep hitting like 145 points a game for y'all to even keep it close, mm -hmm. that is very tiring. But hopefully he puts it out for just one more game and they can win it. 
and that would be a dope finals between Miami and um, Boston. I mean, Miami and Golden State, but I think it will be more competitive as of right now with Boston, Boston because they have so many more people they can score. Um, I don't want to see another Luka and Dallas situation against Golden State because they know how to neutralize one person. So that's probably why I probably want to see the Boston. Right. Miami's not going to win it. If they do miraculously win this series, they're not going to beat Golden State. They're not. That's why I want Boston to win because I like Golden State. Uh, <laughs> Boston is a racist ass city. Day. Yeah, Boston a racist ass city to me. So, so I really don't want Boston to win it for that reason. Even though their team is niggly, I just feel like <laughs> I don't think they call them the name. The white people in Boston, I don't think they call them by their names. I think they say Blackie number uh, seven for t- uh, Jalen Brown <laughs> and Light Bright number zero for Jason Tatum. You know, so I just oh, I don't want to see Boston get any type of joy until they get the races about it. There. Like you, if you ain't never heard a uh, racial slur until you heard it from somebody from Boston, and it's I can't even get it right. That's it's funny though, but it's offensive. So um, I'm rooting That's for Miami. My brother's moving there too co- to work for Amazon. I'm like, yeah, I just hope I hope he's all right when he gets the out Boston there. accent is one of his own, but the racial slur is just hilariously offensive. Hilariously, khakis. God, get you. I can't even do it. I'm not gonna fuck it up. But I, <laughs> I appreciate hey, pull you, up man. In your car. Get your <laughs> fucking car, nigga. Like, oh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> Those I'm fucking walking here. I'm fucking walking here. I'm fucking walking here. <laughs> huh? You don't see this, huh, Darky? So, yeah, but I'm definitely pulling for Miami tonight, man. I appreciate you for coming on again. I want to do this again, so hopefully we can do run this back soon. So just let us know. This has been another episode of the 8 More Than 92 podcast. Where we always keep on hunting. Thank you, the guys at Toxic Tangent Podcast, Julius, and his co-host. You want to say her name because I don't want to fuck this up. Uh, her name is Elise. Okay, Elise. Elise. Like Elise Neal. Yeah. Um, y'all make sure y'all check them out, and we'll be hollering at y'all later. Peace. Back in this bitch, uh, know we full attack in this shit, uh, you know the full Mac came equipped, uh.